Welcome to the Everymaker, my name is Nick, and today we're getting pushy with our table saw. One of the most important things when working with a table saw is to maintain control of whatever it is that you're cutting, but also to make sure that these uh, little digits don't get in the way of the blade. So one way to do that is to use a push stick. I made this quite a while ago uh, when I was cutting some really thin material, and I've been using it ever since, but it's kind of getting eaten up a little bit, so it doesn't work quite as well as I'd want. Matter of fact, uh, in my last episode, I was cutting some really, really thin material, and this was just not working to hold that material down when I got to the end, so I didn't feel like I was in control. So this week, it's time to make a new one. The first thing that I thought about when making a new push stick is making an adjustable stop. So to start, I'm gonna make a knob that will allow me to tighten the stop in the back of the push stick. I laid out all my marking lines using a bottle cap to rough out the size of the circle. To give the knob a little bit more grip, I used a small Forstner bit to drill out holes wherever the lines crossed. then a slightly larger hole in the middle to hold the bolt in place. I used a handsaw to quickly cut off all of the extra scrap. Then took it to the disc sander to smooth out all of the edges. I didn't actually have the right kind of bolt that I wanted, so I used a hanger bolt and just jammed a couple nuts onto the machine thread. Back to the disc center to flush the bolt up with the nuts. I wanted to make sure I had a really tight fit so I had to use some vice grip pliers to hold the bolt while I hammered it down into the knob. Then it was time to work on the main body of the push stick. I used a scrap piece of construction lumber and cut it down to rough size. The board wasn't even close to flat and it was wider than my jointer so I had to use my belt sander to get it pretty flat and to smooth out all of those splintery edges. It still had a bit of a twist, so I grabbed my hand plane and finished flattening the board. I used another piece of scrap in the miter slot on my table saw as a, a plane stop, but soon a workbench, and then I'll be a real woodworker. I really have to sharpen that plane, but it still managed to give me a pretty flat board. Now that one side was flat, I could flatten the bottom. I used the knob to get a rough idea of where the screws were going to be. I marked the center of those lines and then transferred that line onto the back of the board. I used my combination square and measured half the board's width and marked the center where the holes needed to be drilled. The top hole gets the adjustable knob. I was going to put a wood screw in the bottom hole, but the one I was going to use stripped out. So instead, I tapped the hole for a machine screw. 
A tap is a special bit that cuts threads into a hole, and this actually ended up working much better. The tap only goes in so far, and the screw I'm using is very, very long. But with a little effort, I was able to get that screw all the way in. On to shaping the push stick. It barely fit in my crosscut sled, but I managed to cut the angles that I wanted. I marked out the lines for the handles, marking just outside the knot in that wood. Then it was back to the drill press. I was initially gonna drill out the holes on either side of the handle and use my jigsaw to cut out the rest, but I was lazy and already had the drill press set up, so it was easier just to drill it all out. It left this really cool handhold pattern that I really didn't want. So my initial laziness turned into filing, which is way more work. But in a strange way, it was kind of satisfying. I debated on using the rasp to round over all the corners, because setting up tools is a pain, but ended up giving in to the wonders of the router. I mean, I built this router table, I might as well use it every once in a while. And of course, it worked great. Then sanding. This wood is really splintery, so I made sure to take my time and get a nice smooth finish. The final piece is to make the stop. This is the push part of the push stick. It'll grab onto the back of the board as you're pushing it through the saw, so you want something nice and sturdy. I used birch plywood. I made a couple while I had everything set up, just in case I ever need to replace it. I measured the center of the holes on the back of the push stick and transferred those marks to the plywood. I measured the width of the plywood and adjusted my square so I could mark a line right down the middle. I used a bit that was just larger than the size of the screws and also extended my line about half an inch past the top screw. This way the stop could slide up and down. Once I had my initial holes drilled, I set up a small stop at the back of my drill exactly so that the holes would line up. That way I could just drill out the entire channel using the drill press. A little cleanup with a file and it was ready to go. On to the final assembly. The bottom screw is designed to hold the stop in place, but still allow it to slide back and forth. The knob is the only one that needs to be adjusted and can hold that block in place. One of the things you're probably gonna notice about this is that it's huge. Um, it actually weighs quite a bit, but it's got this nice big flat sole here. And that is to make sure that I have plenty of material to support the wood that I'm cutting. A lot of the time I'm cutting these really thin boards here and these things flex so much. So when I'm pushing that through the blade, it wants to deflect up out of the way. And that's what happened when I was doing my business card holder. I had my push stick and the front was touching just fine. The stop in the back though was too long and it was sitting on the table. So it left this big gap here and that caused the board to pop up out of the way. So this, uh, this block can drop down so that I can tighten that back down. Now I still have that push so that I can get that board pushed through the cut just fine. But also this is sitting flat on the board keeping that against the table. So now I don't have to worry that this is gonna pop up anymore. Also, this is wide enough that I can cut through here uh, a channel if I need to cut something smaller than this, as long as 
I leave enough wood on either side that it still sits flat on the table. So I'm very happy with this. This is gonna work out perfect for me. I would love to hear what you guys think of this and give me some feedback. Leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed this project, hit that like button for me. That actually does a whole lot. I also wanna take a moment to say thank you uh, to everyone that has subscribed to my channel, has watched a video, hit that like button, left me a comment, um, giving me a shout out. Thank you, James, you were awesome. Um, I, I really appreciate this. This has been a fun journey. I love to build things, I love making things. I love making videos as well. So the fact that you guys have uh, been so generous and complimentary it just means the world to me, so thank you. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button because I put out videos every other Thursday. So I've got a ton of projects in the works. I've got a ton of projects coming up. I would love to have you guys stick around and see more of what I've got going on. Um, also, join me over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I am always posting behind the scenes stuff and trying to continue the conversation over there of what projects I've worked on, projects that are coming up. So hit me up and let's uh, continue the conversation. I wanna thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again real soon.